Okay, today we're going to do this nice, mellow overcast scene. It's early fall. And I thought this would be a nice scene to paint with these autumn trees. Kind of a challenge too, because when you have these autumn trees with these, you know, normally brighter colors, but then you're dealing with overcast light, you end up with a battle kind of a mental battle, you know, do I paint the bright colors or do I paint the dark values of the tree? And that could be a struggle. My name is Jason Lee Tako, and I'm gonna take you through this painting. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the like button for me. And if you're not, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button as well. I'd truly appreciate it. Got a little yellow in there from my last painting that touched this canvas. So starting out, the colors on my palette, titanium white, cadmium yellow light. That's really close to the cadmium lemon. Cadmium orange, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide. That could also be burnt sienna. They're very close. Cadmium red, medium. Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, and Viridium. I'm leaving off Cerulean because that's a very greenish blue and we don't have much of that going on out here. Most of the blues that I'm seeing in a scene like this are going to be leaning more toward the red. So <clears throat> I don't need to really worry about um, the green blue of Cerulean. I'm painting just on a piece of oil prime linen that I cut out and taped onto a uh, piece of masonite board, for those of you who are wondering. And what I do, for those of you who are new to the channel, is I show the first um, roughly 20 minutes, give or take, to the general public. And then after that, I switch to my Patreon subscribers only. If you want to become a Patreon subscriber, support my channel, you get to watch my videos full length without any kind of commercial interruptions for only $5 a month. And it helps support my channel. Okay, so... What I'm going to do here is, if you saw the little video clip at the beginning, there's trees over on this side that have a little more color to them. There's this main tree that I like the shape, so I'm going to get it in there. And I really struggle between, you know, do I paint this uh, horizontal or vertical? I ended up with a uh, vertical, decided on a vertical composition for this, but could have went horizontal as well but I just I love the shape of this tree and that's what I wanted to uh, emphasize in this but it, had I gone horizontal I could have got more trees in with you know more color and things like that so what I'm going to try to do is the best of both worlds. I'm going to borrow some of the color, more intense color from some of the trees I'm seeing further to the left. There is one tree that is in front of the others over on the left side that has more yellow and green in there. So I'm going to stick that guy right in here, right in front of our main tree, which doesn't have a ton of color in it just because we're dealing with overcast and the um therefore the color is not very intense can also borrow some of the color from some of the trees over on the right not sure if i'll do that the other thing i want to get in is the blue of the hills back there so i'm basically framing a little opening in here to let the eye escape somewhat back into those distant colors and the foreground I'm just gonna have a very small indication of that we don't need much in the foreground foreground is not very interesting anyway because this used to be a cornfield <clears throat> excuse me it's morning so my voice is still 
not where it should be. But this used to be a cornfield, and the developer bought it, and they've been developing this neighborhood. For years, this area sat um, empty. They put one road in. The previous developer, I think this has changed hands several times. This is not far from where I live. And they put in a road, and then they couldn't finish it, apparently. Uh, I think, you know, this housing market crashed and all that. Full. So for, I think it's almost 10 years or more, the road just was just a road and all the lots sat empty. And it ended up making a beautiful walking trail for us. And a lot of people in the surrounding area would come here and walk. And <clears throat> well, and then the housing market picked back up. Somebody else bought it. And so they started building. And this is like, this area over here was that I'm painting right now was really far away from the road. You couldn't get close to it without walking to the cornfield. And I don't want to do that because I don't want to upset the farmers and destroy their crops. Plus, um, you know, probably would have got muddy feet and everything. But now they, um, obviously it's not a cornfield anymore. And they built a road going back here and they have lots marked out. They, of course, have not started building. And some of the lots are sold. So by this time next year, this whole area is going to be completely covered up with houses. Which kind of makes me sad, but... I can't do anything about it, so it was the way of the world. So I'm blocking in, there's what is probably my darkest dark in this painting. It sees dark greens, very earthy, green, earth, earthy greens down here. Um, I'm going to block in just a few to cut up this straight line down here, change the footing of that, make it a little more interesting. And now we're going to move up into the deeper reddish tones. Let's start with some transparent red oxide, some ochre, a bit of viridian to tone that down a bit. It's pretty intense. This is going to be a bit of a challenge for me because I haven't painted an overcast autumn scene like this in a long time. And it's a challenge for me too to, um, you know, struggle between the values versus the colors. But I'm just gonna tear into it here. Let's go with some ultramarine blue to neutralize. This is kind of rough canvas. I usually like the plein air paint in with smoother canvas. A little quicker to cover. And I would highly recommend that, but I just happen to have rough canvas laying around, so here we are. So, try, trying to keep my uprights, as Carlson said, the darkest value plane and we're just blocking in an approximate color I don't know if that's exact but it's you got to start somewhere so grab an approximate color what you think it is and go with it get something in there and then when you do that then start looking at it with a really critical eye don't be overly critical at the beginning because you can't be. Until you get everything, all your relationships well established, you're not going to know, you know, should this be more red, less red? You know, should it be light or darker? You got to get everything kind of blocked in there. That's at least when you're dealing with landscapes, you do. There are some, um, one of my students asked me this recently. 
we were doing a painting of an animal and we just basically finished the animal and he asked you know why is it with this we're just pretty much finishing the entire animal and with other stuff we block everything in for us and it's because the background on that was very ambiguous and wasn't representing anything specific so we didn't need to worry about relating the background and the foreground and making them tie in with each other really accurately with this you're a little more restrained on that so blocking things in first and then looking at with a critical eye can be helpful If you're over, overly critical at the beginning of what you're putting down, you, know, you just paralyze yourself. You might not put anything down for a long time. And so don't be overly crit critical at the beginning. Just get something in, put it in thin, and then after that, Start to look at look at it and ask yourself, you know, okay, should this be lighter, darker, warmer, cooler, more intense, less intense? It's basically the questions you gotta constantly ask yourself after you get things in. So basically, now we just have that ground plane in the front, which is just some very pale yellowish grass. I see almost a hint of green in it. The great news is that the more you do this, the more sensitive your eye is going to get. Almost looks like the sun could start coming out now. I fully expected to do this whole thing in overcast and now now we're getting sunlight, which is interesting. And just do a little hack thing, grab some of this to dirty it up a little bit. Okay, so everything's blocked in. This is a good time to then start to ask yourself, all right, what, um, how are my colors looking, my colors and values? Are my uprights darker than my ground plane? Is my ground plane a little bit darker than the sky? Is the sky overall the lightest thing? If that's how it is in the scene, generally it is, but not always. So there are caveats to the angles of consequent values. And if, and then ask yourself approximately, you know, do I have, um, the general colors going on. Is this leaning more toward this rust color that I'm seeing out there? Is this leaning more towards the really pale yellow? Is this too intense? Do I have to tone that down a little bit? And if you do, tone it down right away. You know, get it closer if it's going to mess you up later. Don't just leave it there with this really gaudy, intense yellow if that's what you have happening because that's going to mess you up because you're constantly going to subconsciously compare this to that when you're working you know you're always comparing things to each other and if something's really off it doesn't have to be perfect but if it's really off it's and it's going to throw you off it could mess up your whole painting so you know ask yourself those questions before you proceed past this point it's really important and if something is wrong with the overall color and value mass then adjust it don't obsess over getting it perfect but just make some adjustments to it before you start going into details. And honestly, past the blocking, that's really all you're doing. You're just making those adjustments as you go. And um, then you know, when you're done adjusting, your painting should be done. So let's clean off our palette here. And uh, and we'll uh, keep going with this. All right, so we're back. Um, still dealing with the sun kind of moving in and out but I want to get some of these greener yellower colors in first like I said these are off on the side 
grab me some Viridian and Yellow Ochre. And a little bit of lemon as well. Just laying this color down and working wet on wet. And the challenge of work with working wet on wet is that if you push your brush down with too much pressure, you could end up creating quite a mess. So don't use a lot of pressure at this point. I do at the beginning when I'm scrubbing stuff in. <clears throat> Excuse me, but when I start laying down, you know, more finishing color, <clears throat> I'm going to take a more gentle approach. Sounds like I should go get some water too. And let's borrow a little bit from over here as well. There's so many, whoops, dropped my brush. So many different beautiful colors out here. Even even when it's overcast. I do want to be careful though because I can really go overboard and make a mess of things. I still want a somewhat organized look. So I'm not going to try to grab every single color I see. <clears throat> and I'm going to keep most of the interesting changes and colors going on here. This is going to be more the rust color, but the greens and everything which is, we got kind of a loose compliment going on here with this reddish orange. Keep that all down, going on down here. dark in lower down on this tree it's maybe a bit too red so let's do a little more orange on that This is a deeper, more, almost get the impression of a slightly cooler color. I'm going to do a, throw a little bit of alizarin and ultramarine in there, and then a bit of yellow ochre to keep it from going too dark and too cool. And for this part, I'm actually borrowing from kind of another tree. This color is so close to the finishing um, color that I don't have to do a whole lot with it unless I want to. I will do more with it and this will be done on the Patreon side, but <clears throat> I'll probably end up cooling the top and doing some things where it looks pretty flat even in life when I look at this tree stand in here. It, looks like basically just one flat value in color and I'm going to probably do some little subtle things to this to um, give it a little more dimension that's just from you know painting for a long time when you do that you kind of start to figure out ways of 
making things look better and just learning from other artists. I remember Clyde Aspiving in this one video I saw of him painting and he said that, you know, he'll slightly cool the tops and lighten them. And he said, you're not gonna see this out there, but you will, but it is there. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I think I'm getting slightly too dark with this value, which I'm okay with right now because what I can do then is go back over with thicker paint and of course lighter value paint to uh, give it some more interest and dimension then. This tree in the reference photo is just this um, dark little green thing sticking up. And I think what it is, it's a, uh, sadly, it's a dead tree that's been overcome by invasive vine growth. We have a lot of that going on, sadly. So I'm going to try to change it a little bit. And make it something, as the great prophet, prophet Bob Ross would have said, something a little happier. Give this tree a happy little friend, not a sad, dead little friend. Hopefully I don't, didn't violate any copyright laws from the Bob Ross, the people who uh, basically took Bob Ross and made them their slave, essentially, from what I understand, and just completely took advantage of the poor guy. And they might come sue me now for using that term, who knows. Yeah, I think that's more interesting, having this uh, brighter green, this more earthy thing going on here, and then this red here. So I give it a little bit of variety. When you're dealing with the overcast, you're dealing with uh, pretty much local color. You're not dealing with the effects of light on, you know, and changing the color nearly as much. So it can be fun, it can be easier to do in a way, because you're dealing just more with local color, but um, gives you more advantage to take things and make them more interesting. So I'm going to stop now and switch over to the uh, Patreon side. Um, but thank you for watching. If you want to see me finish this, uh, join me on Patreon. And I got a bunch of videos up there already, full length, $5 a month. And you can watch this uh, start to finish without commercial interruptions and see all the things that I'm going to uh, be showing my Patreon only members. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and we'll see you again.